Hello, Laura J and Michael Seegers here for the Michael and Laura show. We are going to be recording episode seven, which is the continuation of last message, which was on the violet flame. And today, Michael will be introducing the tube of light. Thank you, Laura. I think we'll start with the image of the tube of light. Okay, so we go back to the chart of the I am presence or the chart of your divine self. And we're going to go into some more detail that we didn't really touch upon in the previous video. The causal body here is going to be the subject of an upcoming video. We're going to do the electronic belt. Today we're doing the tube of light. And we're going to start by pointing out the distinction of the crystal cord. And we talked about that, how it is a pulsation of source energy of luminous self-intelligent substance coming from the heart of the ion presence 24 7 every day of your life it's anchoring in the secret chamber of the heart first and forth is a threefold flame radiating through the chakras and it is also called the river of light it's the source energy that powers the vehicle until your last dying breath and it's quite distinct from the tube of light. We look here now at this wider band, also coming from the heart of the ion presence. But the tube of light is not always there. It must be invoked. And until you call it forth into manifestation in the physical plane, it just remains as latent potential. And the tube of light is a force field of protection. And it's something that all students on the path need to have. Because when we begin to work with the science of the spoken word, and we begin to invoke the violet flame, and we're calling forth light as part of our daily work, our aura fills with light. We radiate light out through our chakras. And become very attractive to forces of darkness that would like to have that light. And they have all manner of sneaky little techniques to siphon off the light from the students if they're not properly protected. And so the masters give us this tool so that we can invoke the tube of light on a daily basis and prevent leakage and theft of our light. The tube of light extends about nine feet in diameter. So anywhere from a foot and a half to two feet past your fingertips with your arms outstretched is where the tube of light will manifest in the early stages. As you gain proficiency and call it forth on a daily basis, it will get bigger, it will get stronger, and it will be one of the most valuable tools in your toolbox. So we're gonna show you the words and we're gonna go back to the tube of light illustration in a moment. Beloved, I am presence bright. Around me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame called forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire. Keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with the violet flame. So here we are. Beloved, I am presence bright. Around me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, called forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. So a couple of key points to notice there that we're using the name of God, I am. Beloved, I am presence bright. We're calling forth the instruction very specifically. Round me seal your tube of light. Called for it now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free. The temple is the physical body. It's the temple of the Lord. From all discord sent to me. We're walking around in the world of form. Which is filled with discordant vibrations. Vibrations that are not harmonious. Often dark forces that would impinge upon or even attempt to attack 
the student on the path wanting to steal that light. And so we call this fourth the force field of protection. And while we're doing that, we invoke the violet flame so that we're actually standing inside a cylinder of violet fire. Within the tube of light, I'm calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with the violet flame. It's a very simple little mantra, a very powerful mantra. And we're going to give you an example of how that sounds with the rhythm and the intonation as demonstrated by Elizabeth Clare Proctor. We face the chart of the presence as you say this. Beloved, I am present, bright, from me, seal your tube of light, from the sanded matter, blank, all court now in God's own name. Let it be my humble breeze from all the courts and do me. I am gone about violent fire, blaze and then we all these up, keeping God in freedom name, till I am one of violent name. Beloved, I am present, bright, from me, seal your tube of light, from the sanded matter, blame, all court now in God's own name. Let it be my temple free from all the gods and in me. I am God about violent fire to place and then be all these up. Keeping God in freedom, name no, I am one for the violent day. Love it, I am present bright. Tell me, seal your two of light. I'm a sanded matter of light. All for now in God's own name. Let it be my temple free from all the gods and in me. I am God about violent fire to place and then be all these up. Keeping on freedom, name, no, I am one for the violent name. Now, there are a couple of points I want to touch upon that have to do with the actual physics and chemistry of the light. Everything in the physical plane is subject to decay and deterioration. Nothing lasts forever, everything erodes, and light coming from the spiritual planes into the physical plane is subject to the same physical laws and has what the masters call a rate of decay. And to understand this, we're just gonna use simple numbers. We're gonna talk about invoking the tube of light today and receiving 100% of that light. Within 24 hours, it will decay by 50%. So your force field of protection will only be half as strong tomorrow as it is today. And you have to reinforce it and you have to invoke it again. And every day that you do so, you continue to strengthen it, building up momentum, over the days and months and years, such that it becomes a very powerful force. And I want to contrast that with the concept of having a spiritual practice that's not a daily practice. If you were accustomed to going to church once a week and thought maybe this was a good idea to just do once a week, consider the mathematics of the rate of decay. You invoke the violet flame on Sunday. On Monday, it's only 50% as strong. On Tuesday, it's down to 25%. On Wednesday, you're down to 12.5%. By 50% per day rate of decay, you have nothing left at the end of the week. Whereas if you were to spend just a few minutes every day and reinforce it on a daily basis, as it's decaying by 50%, it's also gaining in strength by a new 100% with each daily application. So that by the end of the week, you have much more tube of light than the individual who was only calling it forth once a week. Even if they were calling it forth for a solid hour once a week, they would have less than you would have if you were doing five minutes a day. So everything about the teachings of the masters is scientific, no different with the tube of light. The math, the science is very precise. And so we always recommend to the students that they make this part of their daily practice. First thing in the morning is really the best time to do it. And it only takes a few minutes a day and you gain momentum and you gain strength and you intensify that tube of light so that years down the road, it has the ability to stop things that you would never have believed possible. The masters tell us it can become physically bulletproof. I have no reason to doubt that. I've been using it for 35 years. I've seen things in my life that quite frankly, I can't talk about because nobody would believe it. But the tube of light, I absolutely believe it can become bulletproof. And it's something that we all want to have. Now we also have a longer version of this. This is the full length version, Violet Fire and Tube of Light Decree number 0 0.01 in our decree book. And I'm going to point out some details of this to just reinforce the understanding that the science of the spoken word is very specific. And the more precisely that we learn to use the science of the spoken word, the more effectively we can produce the manifestations that we desire. And this one begins, oh my constant loving I am presence. 
Now light of God above me, whose radiant forms a circle of fire before me to light my way. I am faithfully calling to thee to place a great pillar of light for my own mighty I am God presence all around me right now today. Notice that we are faithfully calling it forth. We are affirming our faith, our absolute certainty that the cosmic law, that the call compels the answer, is in effect. It's not wishful thinking. It's not hopeful. It's not superstition like crossing your fingers and hope you're protected. It's very, very scientific. And we are absolutely in full faith calling forth our tube of light here. Keep it intact through every passing moment, manifesting as a shimmering shower of God's beautiful light through which nothing human can ever pass. And what we're describing here, nothing human can ever pass, all the discordant vibrations that are emitted from human beings, especially mental and emotional energy. There's a lot of toxic energy that is coming out of humans all day long, and we are swimming in a sea of that energy as we walk down the street, as we go through life. And so now we are acknowledging, we are recognizing and understanding that we are becoming insulated from all of that, which actually has tremendous health benefits. Into this beautiful electric circle of divinely charged energy, direct the swift up surge of the violet fire of freedom's forgiving transmitting flame. Cause the ever expanding energy of this flame projected downward into the force field of my human energies to completely change every negative condition into the positive polarity of my own great God self. This is a pretty powerful statement. All the negative conditions that exist in your daily experience, what a blessing to have them completely transmuted into positive, pure spiritual energy. Let the magic of its mercy so purify my world with light that all whom I contact shall always be blessed with the fragrance of violets from God's own heart in memory of the blessed dawning day when all discord Cause, effect, record, and memory is forever changed into the victory of light and the peace of the ascended Jesus Christ. All whom I contact shall always be blessed with the fragrance of violets from God's own heart. This is interesting. This is expressing a concept that you might not have considered. And the masters call it transfusion of light. When you come into contact with another person, I actually came up with the phrase years ago, the electric handshake, when I noticed the effect that I had on an individual just by shaking hands. But it's not always necessary to make physical contact. I always recommend that when you see children and especially little babies, look right into their eyes and smile at them because you are giving them a transfusion of light directly from your heart bling and it radiates out through your eyes and they receive it, they absorb it. It's a blessing to them. And it reminds me of a, a story I was telling you last week, Laura, about a lady in a staple store. A number of years ago, I was in the store, servicing that store as part of my work. And after I got my paperwork signed, I turned to walk out and the lady touched my arm and she said, don't go. And I turned around and I said, is there something else? She said, I just want to stand in your presence. And I was blown away that she would use those exact words. And I knew that she was feeling my tube of light and she was so sensitive to it and so aware of it and recognize how wonderful it was and how unique it was. She just wanted to experience it for a few more moments. And so I stood there and I just looked straight in her eyes and smiled at her. And we probably stood there for about 10 seconds. Then I gave her a hug and, and I left. And I had the same experience a few weeks later in another staple store with another lady who used the exact same phrase again. She said, I just want to stand in your presence. And I've never forgotten that. Just another couple of entries in my alchemical journal of things that are very noticeable and are explained so perfectly when we examine something like the words of this particular decree. The light touches people. They feel it. They notice it. And some people are actually very acutely sensitive to it, such as these two ladies. And then we have the, the bottom of that paragraph. And we talked about karma in a previous video, and I talked about four elements of karma, cause, effect, record, and memory. And here we're specifically calling for all discord on all levels, cause, effect, record, and memory to be changed into the victory of light and the peace of the ascended Jesus Christ. The more specific we are in our use of the science of the spoken word, the more powerful and the more effective we will be in producing the manifestations that we desire in our life. 
The last paragraph, I am now constantly accepting the full power and manifestation of this fiat of light and calling it into instantaneous action by my own God-given free will and the power to accelerate without limit this sacred release of assistance from God's own heart until all men are ascended and God free in the light that never, never, never fails. So we're grounding the light now with this paragraph, with this wording, we're anchoring this light in the world of form, in the physical plane, and we're calling it into instantaneous action, noticing by our free will that we also give it the power to accelerate without limit so that this tube of light has a self-expanding, self-perpetuating quality to it. Given that light has a decay rate of 50% per day, this is a very powerful activity to be adding to our invocation. Now we have this particular one in a video format that we're going to share with you, courtesy of somebody on YouTube whose channel is called Light Flame. I don't know the person's name. I'm so grateful to them for creating this. And you're going to hear the words of the decree and you're going to see the visualization that you can use. We touched upon that previously that the third eye chakra is an organ of projection as well as perception so that what you can image in your mind's eye will be projected out through your third eye into the world of form. And so that whenever you add visualization to your invocation, you strengthen the result that you produce. Some people, when they first hear that, think it's going very fast. Personally, I don't think that was very fast. And I just want to comment upon that for a minute. When you learn to do something like typing, you begin very slowly. But by the time you become proficient, proficient enough to be hired as a typist, your fingers move much more quickly and it flows and it feels very natural. And it's no different with decreeing the science, the spoken word, invocations to the sacred fire, begin slowly so that you can learn the word patterns. And with proficiency, you pick up the speed, you accelerate, the giving of the decree and you accelerate your consciousness. In order to speak more swiftly, you have to think more swiftly. To articulate the syllables, to enunciate clearly and to do it rapidly accelerates your brain. And you will actually accelerate yourself into higher dimensions of consciousness through this type of work. But also quite interestingly, as you increase the rate of the speaking, the I am presence increases the rate of the light pouring down through your chakras. So this river of life, this energy flowing down from the heart of the I am presence 
begins like turning on a tap. It's just a trickle. And you open the tap and you get more water. And eventually it comes down as a torrent. And when the light comes pouring down with greater force, the chakras open up like flowers and they begin to spin. And when your chakras spin, they emit light and you will discover that you can radiate light for a great distance away from the physical body, literally for miles when you gain proficiency with this. So that you will start to have the experience of walking into a place like a shopping mall and noticing people turning around to look at you from a greater distance than you would have expected because the light is touching them. And they don't know what it is. They don't know why they just suddenly turned around or why they decided to just look at you. But it's because the light pouring through you is touching people at a distance. It's very noticeable. And so there's a profound science to all this. We don't just accelerate because we're in a hurry. We want to get the decree done because we want to get to work or whatever. It's, it's not about trying to be fast. It's just about gaining proficiency in having the flow of light pouring through your chakras, having your chakras operating at their optimum capacity, and you will discover yourself living in a very different way, certainly more filled with light. I think we've touched upon everything we need to for the tube of light for today. Is there something, uh, Laura, that you can think of that you might want me to include? One thing that you had mentioned, I feel is significant for us to just touch on before we go to a deeper level dive in future is why the morning is the most powerful time to be doing these decrees. Excellent question. The science of karma is profound. Karma is released to us according to the cycle of the cosmic clock, which we're going to touch upon when we do the electronic belt. But the planetary karma is released by the great divine director at four o'clock in the morning every day. And so as karma descends, it's coming from spiritual planes into physical planes. And you have two choices in life. You can experience the burden of that oncoming karma, or you can transmute that karma and increase the potential for magic in your life throughout the day. People who prefer to decree later in the day, in my opinion, don't really understand the practicality of this. Karma is descending and it does produce limitation. And so if you can transmute your daily allotment, your karmic burden on a personal and on a planetary level and get it out of the way before noon, you got the whole rest of the day for things to happen that would not otherwise have been possible. And so the masters talk about when you really get diligent about this, you want to be up at five o'clock in the morning and, and get it taken care of. And that for many people sounds pretty hardcore. Certainly for beginners, it's not what we expect. But if you have the choice and if you have the time or are willing to make the time to give it 10 or 15 minutes a day at seven o'clock in the morning, you might want to try the experiment, try a month of 7 a.m. and compare it to a month of 7 p.m. and keep a journal and see what you notice. If you don't keep a journal, if you don't pay attention, you won't really have anything to talk about. But as an alchemist, really, you have to experiment. Some people in greater wisdom would say, I prefer to learn from the mistakes of other people. Those who perhaps are more stubborn would say, I'm going to have to learn by my own mistakes. And I've heard it said that I learned so much from my mistakes, I was thinking about making a few more. <laughs> but I pretty much got past that. It's not how I prefer to live. I would now benefit from other people's mistakes by observing and connecting the dots and saying, oh, that makes sense. I'll just do it that way. But in the beginning, you've got to experiment. You've got to try these different things. And if my idea makes any sense to you, it's just based on science. Karma descends at four o'clock in the morning. You can deal with it. You can transmute it. Or you can deal with it by living through it and carrying the burden of it. Either way, 
The karma is there. You can't escape it. And having the tool of the violent flame and having the tool of the tube of light will serve you immensely to apply it scientifically. So we will be diving into the causal body and potentially the electronic belt in episode eight of the Michael and Laura show. So please let us know what this episode meant to you, what it meant for you, and what you're going to do with it. Whether you are already practicing decrees, whether you will bring these into your practice, and what else you you are needing so that you know you are not alone you have support we are here and we very much look forward to continuing to share this journey with you now that you have found us so thank you and Michael always an absolute delight thank you for sharing your wisdom with us thank you for hosting this Laura it's been an absolute pleasure namaste namaste